In this lecture, we're going to go through some of the terms that are central to cybersecurity. So by the end of this lecture, you should have an understanding of what cybersecurity is, uh, some of the terms, the key terms that are used in cybersecurity, and more fundamentally, the thing, the three uh, attributes that we try and control within cybersecurity of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Cybersecurity comes out of a wider field of study called information security. All human endeavor relies on information. So whether you're running a company as a business, whether you're running a country as a government, whether you're a higher education institute like a university and engaged in education, whether you're doing research or even in your personal life, uh, information is the thing, the driver of all of those activities. So information security is about protecting this information from unauthorized access, harm or misuse. And the way that we do that is by preserving the attributes of information security, which are confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Now, this is sometimes referred to as the CIA triad um, because of the initials of these three attributes. Um, however, some uh, people prefer to not confuse it with the US intelligence agency and uh, call it AIC. So cybersecurity is a subset of information security that concerns the digital realm. So the protection of information systems which uh, operate using hardware, software and associated infrastructure and also the data, the digital data on these um, systems and the services that they provide and it's concerned with protecting against unauthorized access harm or misuse in that realm. This includes harm in, uh, caused by intentionally by the operator of the system or accidentally as a result of failing to follow security procedures. So it's important to realize that not all of cybersecurity's concerns are about hackers or people deliberately trying to uh, impact on a system, that there are um, more commonly um, operator errors that can um, be a factor or environmental issues, and we'll um, look at that in a, um, a little bit later on. The CIA triad is also extended sometimes to include authentication, authorization, and accountability, non-repudiation and reliability, and we'll cover those um, concepts as well. One of the important things to note is that privacy is a part of confidentiality, but it's not interchangeable. Um, and so it is possible to infringe privacy without breaking confidentiality. So privacy is uh, to do with information that is about a person and there is uh, that that person may or may not want to share with anybody else. And we'll see that there are level, different levels of sensitivity of personal information as well um, that Privacy, privacy legislation and data protection regulations also concern themselves with. So everyone has a different understanding of the exact definition of cybersecurity terms depending on their perspective. So consumers will have a view about this which will differ from IT um, employees that differ from uh, employees that are concerned with risk management, businesses, governments, military, etc. Um, this is because their particular concerns are, are going to be different. Um, in part of this is because um, in terms of cybersecurity, what we're actually concerned about is financial loss um, from an incident. And what we consider to be a financial loss is going to be um, really from the uh, person who's suffered that loss as to determine what uh, impact that has had. Uh, something may not be commercially or actually tangibly cost very much, but may be central to the operation of uh, an organization and it may have been critical and cause other finite losses that uh, are hard to calculate, for example. Uh, 
So in the example here of intellectual property theft, um, we can have something that's stolen and that uh, claims could be made that that is worth millions and millions of dollars because that's what went into actually uh, producing that intellectual property. But if nothing actually is, is done with the intellectual property that somebody has stolen, then really the impact is, is zero. It's actually not measurable at all. And in some cases, we're talking about financial loss, which is the potential for financial loss, not actual financial loss. Customer password is another example where uh, if a password is stolen, then that's obviously an impact to the person that the, whose password was stolen. But if that's never used to actually inflict any harm on that person, to steal money, for example, or assume their identity, then actually the loss um, didn't have any financial consequences at the time. So this is all measured by calculating risk and uh, it's important to calculate this properly. Um, otherwise, it's very hard to know how much money and time to invest in controlling that risk. And that's going to be an important feature that we'll have to consider when we look at risk management. So all of this comes down to um, understanding what can be affected. And when we're looking at cybersecurity, um, we talk about assets. So assets are anything that an organization values um, where if it was lost, degraded, um, then that would cause the organization an economic loss. So it could be a whole range of different things from files to programs that are running on computers to hardware, disks, servers, mobile phones, laptops, and then through to actually to people themselves, personnel and property. Um, clearly, uh, now uh, with cyber physical systems, there is a danger that hacking a uh, emergency valve on some um, uh, nuclear reactor, for example, could result in, in human death. Uh, hacking an aeroplane, taking over controls of an autonomous car, again, could uh, re result in uh, death or damage to human life. So that's clearly of fundamental importance to not only organizations, but the people involved themselves. Uh, when we talk about um, vulnerabilities, we're referring to weaknesses in these assets that, when exploited, will lead to an ex economic loss. Now, it's an important distinction here because you can have a theoretical weakness uh, in an asset, but um, in fact, there is no way for a, uh, a threat we'll come to in, um, next can actually exploit this to lead to an economic loss and so from that perspective the weakness is not necessarily a vulnerability uh, so the thing that acts on a vulnerability to ex to cause this economic loss is a threat and that can be anything that um, results in this negative impact uh, we'll see that threat actors are people that actually bring about um, the or people, groups, or external forces that are responsible for threats. And they can be internal or external. Uh, and external actors can include environmental factors like earthquakes, fire, flood, flood etc. And internal actors may have a motivation that's um, malicious or simply they have made an error that exploits a vulnerability in the system and causes an economic impact. And so what we're measuring when we talk about risk is the probable frequency and probable magnitude of future loss from a threat acting on a vulnerability. So we have a vulnerability and um, we have threat actors out there that can execute a threat on that vulnerability to bring about an impact. And the probability of that happening and how often it was likely to happen is what we know as risk. We'll, come, we'll do some examples that make that point clearer. A threat action is what a threat actor did or caused. Um, so for example, a threat action can be the use of malware, um, carrying out hacking, doing a social attack, etc. Uh, when we talk about controlling risk, 
what we're referring to is the way that we deal with risk to try and minimize it. And there are different categories and different approaches that we can take to doing that. Um, but controls um, act to minimize cybersecurity risk, and they're split into three different types of control. There are preventive controls, detective controls, and corrective ones. An example of a preventive control is putting a password on a computer. In a house, you might think of a preventive control as a lock on a door or security screens on a window. Detective controls are the controls that we put in place to actually detect that something has happened. So again, in a computer system, it might be the use of uh, logs, for example, that record activity on the computer and we can have a look in that log and see that somebody um, accessed a, a disk. Corrective controls are things like backups where if an incident has happened, uh, our risk or has been carried out, like for example ransomware where your disk is encrypted uh, by malware, then restoring that through a backup is a corrective control. Sometimes these are referred to um, as safeguards, controls, um, security controls, countermeasures or mitigations. Controls are only one type of uh, approach to reducing risk um, and other ways of doing that um, uh, or responses to risk, I should say, are that we can reduce or mitigate it through the use of controls or we could assign or transfer the risk. An example of this is where instead of running our own server infrastructure in a company, we might use a cloud provider like Azure, Microsoft Azure or um, Amazon AWS um, and get them to run our hardware for us so that they assume the risk of any problems happening with the hardware. We can also assign risk by taking out a cyber insurance policy so that we're not faced with economic loss if an incident happens. Uh, the cyber insurance company assumes that loss and therefore assumes the risk. We can accept a risk, so we can just say, yep, um, that's fine. If uh, this happens, then that, that cost is going to be acceptable for us to, um, to uh, you know, sort of take on board. Uh, we can deter um, to try and, and uh, reduce the risk, so introducing potentially the threats of legal action uh, for employees who may transgress a non-disclosure agreement, for example, we can just say you'll get sacked if you uh, get discovered doing anything like this, and that would be a deterrence to reduce that risk. We can avoid the risk uh, by actually not doing the process or not owning an asset or actually engaging the activity that resulted in the risk in the first place. And then finally, we can reject or ignore it, which means that effectively we just don't believe that that risk is, is valid. Subjects and objects, uh, you don't have to worry too much about this, but this is, is brought up in uh, textbooks sometimes when referring to information security and cybersecurity. So in this context, a subject is um, a person, a software process, a computer that can access an object and an object is an entity that provides information to a subject. So objects are files, database programs and they are the things that are accessed by the subjects and what we're trying to do in certain situations is control that access and so when we talk about access control we talk about subjects and objects. So here's a scenario where we're trying to think about a company and what assets they provide and what sort of risks they might have to consider. So in this case, we're talking about a games company and it may not be immediately apparent because a lot of this is intellectual property as to all of the things that would, they would have to worry about in terms of cybersecurity risk. Um, one aspect may be the fact that they're developing a new product and uh, uh, it's very important for games companies in particular not to have that information about that leaking early and potentially um, undermining that market. And so uh, 
that's a very serious consideration for games companies and threats to employees for leaking any information ahead of time um, are you know sort of real. Also, uh, companies are dealing with suppliers, distributors, and customers, and they rely on those suppliers, distributors, and customers for their uh, business um, livelihood and uh, the functioning of the company. So they have to worry about the risks that they take on board through those third parties. And so those are significant as well. We've seen recently, for example, a major hack uh, uh, in the US predominantly, but um, called SolarWinds, where a piece of software was compromised that was then used by a whole range of other companies and organizations. And so their use of that compromised software from a third party uh, led to uh, their systems being compromised in turn um, and uh, obviously accusations by the Americans in particular as to who was behind this. But it was a real eye-opener in terms of the risks that we, we face from these so-called supply chain attacks, uh, attacks to anybody that is providing you with a service uh, or a product. Also, we have other employees that are not on the team, so contractors, etc. So in, in a real instance, there was a Polish uh, games company called CD Projekt Red, um, who were responsible for games like Cyberpunk 2077, Witcher 3, who in 2021 were subject to a ransomware attack. And the attackers also, other than encrypting the disks of uh, the company, stole the source code. Uh, of all these games and then uh, demanded a ransom of a million dollars in cryptocurrencies um, or else they would release that source code uh, to uh, the dark web so that anybody could access it. Uh, Eventually the company didn't pay but eventually the hackers claimed that somebody had paid some of the ransom um, But as a consequence of this, um, multiple copies of the source code were made available throughout the web. And the company CD Projekt had to deal with that by taking, uh, issuing uh, these notices to try and take that content down. But essentially they had suffered that impact, not only of the ransomware itself, but the loss of this intellectual property uh, to an enormous cost.